your thoughts on how the Taiwan politics is likely to evolve as we see this is a very interesting political year for the United States. Well, last week people say whatever happens to Taiwan, United States will come to our aid, and that's the main political campaign to be used by the end of the year and 2024. DPP has a very comprehensive playbook on that as well. But this year, I think wherever they go, they will be challenged by people saying that, look, you've promised us support and security. What happens? Why don't we see U.S. responding? Why don't we see Japan responding? I suppose that DPP will call the United States and Japan for their promised support in order to gain that confidence. If things continue to worsen in Taiwan, which I do not hope, but more and more people will start thinking whether those promises is how the mm. internal debate is going on in Taiwan right now. Well, the internal debate is really quiet. Let me say a few words about DPP position. It has at the beginning worked on the deniability. They said they don't know anything. They were extremely quiet, all very silent. Then when Pelosi landed, it became extremely widely publicized and there were a lot of high level words um, being touted. Nancy even expressed to Tsai Ing-wen that she does not represent just the House, but the Senate and not mm -hmm. just the Congress, but the United States. So there were a lot of touting and on the ground campaign level, DPP's candidates for the year end election have used that to say, look, United States is supporting us. Don't worry. And that don't worry was broken by the military drill, so they now scramble to find another position. And I truly believe that the United States have put a break on this. They don't want DPP to further irritate or challenge China by saying United States will come to the aid, because that will drag the United States into a war that they are neither prepared nor want. What are the worst scenarios that you see Taiwan needs to be prepared for? Uh, let me say something about Taiwan Policy Act. I think we narrowly escaped a true disaster because the Taiwan Policy Act will change the fundamental of the Sino-American relationship, will change the one China policy from the United States perspective. It proposed to give Taiwan major non-NATO ally status and also with the direct support of um, fiscal budgets, it also has a land lease program attached to it. If that does happen, Taiwan will truly be used as a queen's gambit against the PRC by the United States. Mm -hmm. So we have narrowly escaped that because they have put the discussion on hold. Uh, so how do you see political figures trying to cash out their political capital by uh, using Taiwan as a political tool? Well, that is why I always believe that there is a very comprehensive playbook. And Nancy Pelosi is only one act of that playbook. You know, using deniability and personal individual blame are very cheap tricks for politicians to avoid responsibilities if things go bad. Well, if we look at this really long playbook, you have seen um, Australia and Japan working in concert with the United States in Asia. And you also have seen some discussion about future potential game plans on how China should take or would take Taiwan. That indicates to me that there are a lot of war game planners. They are planning an eventual war. And in the perspective of the United States, they would like to have a quote unquote, small and limited war to break the status quo, to gain further control of the situation, to put China's ascendance economically and regionally at bay. And this long playbook has many, many acts. Pelosi is the beginning of one act.